Only Liam Fox Foxtrot Romeo, caution, Viking on the runway. Viking on the runway, uh, copy that, Gold Foxtrot Romeo. I think I'm quite off my... Oh, and we are now through, and as you can see... Out, out to do disconnect! Auto pilot disconnect! <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, my life flashed before my eyes! Oh my goodness! Oh, and let's pull up. So, hi folks, welcome to the channel. It's uh, Mantok and Eric Lund here. Uh, this is part two of the uh, Jersey Approach uh, NDB Lock DME. Got those the wrong way around, but never mind. Um, so, we're here in the, in the Cherokee now at 3,000 feet just north of Jersey, uh, heading down to, uh, to the DME. Uh, and av as you have a look at my instruments I'm showing you here, we have. 2.2 nautical miles away from the the localizer is actually what I'm tracking there 110.90, and you can see right there uh, up on the left hand corner my yellow dial. You can see I'm tracking south to to NDB. So uh, yeah, here we are. Uh, we've got 1.7 nautical miles left to go, just like I show you there. Um, Eric, yeah. anything anything to say so far? We've no, not, except not really. when you said with the yellow dial you're tracking south, just people remember that it's an RBI, a relative bearing indicator, not a relative, uh, yeah, not an RMI. So it's your relative bearing. Yes, that's right. It's my relative. That's why it's showing zero aircraft. instead of 180. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Um, and I, if you just look right there, I was just tuning my mixture, and I've just indicated there with my mouse that we're talking over a pre-recording folks because it just turned as you saw the bloopers it just turned out to be <laughs> way too chaotic to try and have all the concentration to fly uh, in this condition and try and be legible and actually give you something that's interesting um, so if you look folks we've just passed over the NDB right now as you can see my yellow needle has uh, swung behind the aircraft meaning that we've passed over and I'm now counting uh, about 10 to 15 seconds uh, um, passing south from the NDB before we turn right onto the course of 265 and in a second there, yep, you'll see me turn uh, 265. Uh, bearing in mind folks, I've got the altitude hold engaged and the heading hold uh, bugged off on the autopilot, so that is actually what's keeping me fairly smooth right now. Uh, you can see my right hand turn um, and also whenever you have heading uh, mode selected and you make a turning in the Cherokee, it will always turn you on a rate one turn, which is very helpful in, in IFR conditions. So we're turning onto the heading of 265 right now, and we're uh, just about to level out on 265, uh, where we will begin our descent to altitude 1,600 feet uh, by DME 6. Um, and you'll see me pull out the, uh, the uh, altitude hold there, and I'll start manually descending to, to the new altitude. And you'll see now my uh, nautical miles uh, counter there is 2.4. And that, you see, 2.5 now. That's counting up now because we're actually flying away from the localizer now. We're, we're uh, the localizer DME right there uh, of, of the, the runway. Um, and so we'll start descending. Oh, my goodness, what am I doing now? Oh, yeah, I'm um, trimming for a stable <laughs> descent. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's weird talking over something you've done previously while you're not doing it instantaneously yeah. as you're talking. Oh, um, what am I doing now? Yeah, it's like, oh crap, well, I can't remember doing that. A um, <laughs> little bit fast there, folks, but uh, I'll probably be pulling, yeah, I'll be pulling my my uh, throttle out, but uh, yeah. yeah I, I will say it is very disorientating when you're doing it with, with no outside references. I've been flying VFR long enough that it, it is quite unnerving to begin with, but um, I've I've practiced this approach a qu quite a few times to get to this point. So, <laughs> if you wonder why part two took a while, it's is probably this down to the fact that I n I wanted to get this nailed perfectly. If you if you remember the bloopers, folks, you you could see that we I I didn't fly it perfectly and uh, I came out of the cloud layer uh, in a pretty bad position there. <laughs> and and that the time that we recorded that i i just came back to eric and i said look we we can't i can't do this i have to i have to do better than that but uh oh you see my my vertical 
descent rate me in my my dial there you can see it wiggling up and down as I'm trying to to stabilize a nice smooth descent okay we're now just um, pulling out at 1600 feet I've just just now I've just put in the the uh, altitude hold and if you look at my nautical miles uh, from the D the 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 DME it's 5.8 now so it's we're getting we're just getting close to the right hand turn to uh, come onto a heading of 085 and then after uh, wh when we get to that point we begin our in our, our final descent to the runway to the threshold we'll we'll do the call outs as well uh, in terms of ATC, we should have been uh, doing some ATC callouts, but but actually this all happens very quickly, so um, may maybe I'll, I'll cover them later in a, in another video. Um, but now I'm doing my my final right hand turn. If you look, I'm now just um, showing you the nav one and nav nav two uh, dials there. They are both actually tuned into one one zero decimal nine. The reason both of them are is that. Uh, to track the localizer, I need to have it active in NAV1, but I wanted to have it, it showing up on NAV2 without the glide path. So I wanted to give you the, an idea of what it should look like on NAV2 in that we are not using a glide path. We're using Localizer live. Yep, thank you. Thank you. Localizer is now live. And it looks like it's right about now it's half scale. So if you just look what I did with the autopilot there, I put it on to... I tried to flick it onto the... Uh, the the high frequency track, uh, but realize the best thing to do is actually get ourselves a s a manually on the 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 the, lo the localizer, and then flick over. Right now, as I'm doing so, to the track mode. So I, we're now tracking nav one. We're now tracking the the localizer. But I wanted to make sure the aircraft was on in the right heading, uh, so that it didn't have to like swing across the sky and waste time to be able to to uh, to attach itself onto the localizer. So now we're on the localizer. Uh, we're still uh, level flight and we're now waiting for DME distance 4 and that is our descend point and uh, if uh, actually now if I have a look at 100 knots we should be descending at roughly 500 nautical, uh, 500 feet per minute, uh, just a little bit over I think it was about 530 feet per minute that's our descent rate at 100 knots so uh, you'll see I'll try and hold a hundred knots as best I can um, and then hold our descent rate as best I can and you will see and I'm just playing around with my landing line there folks um, but yeah better switch that on and off yeah, yeah. just in case <laughs> just in case um, so yeah coming close to, yep 4.1 nautical miles now I'm gonna begin my descent I'm gonna you'll see my, me pull my altitude out right about there pulling my altitude out now so beginning my descent um, you'll see if you look at the nav one folks you'll see the glide path is there but I'm trying not to pay any attention to the glide path I am all, most of my concentration is going to be on my vertical speed uh, gauge because that is going to be what I want to get smooth I want to get that nice and smooth at just over 500 feet per minute descent rate and uh, and just kind of ignore the glide path on nav one, um, but you can use it um, just visually here on the, in the video to see how this actually works out. Um, and coming up to to distance three, we've just passed distance three, and we should be 1,280 feet. And if you look at our altimate, uh, altitude, that was roughly on on. That was stabilized roughly. Next one is uh, at DME two, is nine nine hundred and sixty feet. So uh, if you look at my uh, my uh, nautical miles, two point three, two point two, about a thousand feet, two point one, and boom. Right. So that's about nine. F that was about nine forty instead of nine sixty. But so we are actually pretty pretty good uh, we're pretty stabilized right now uh, and that's reflected in the glide slope on nav one uh, despite the fact we're not supposed to be using it but uh, here we go mm -hmm. and um, uh, approaching minimums right about now we're about a f hundred feet above minimums now but as you can see the uh, the visibility is actually really bad um, but despite that we're going to continue so minimums is 640 at right now roughly uh, and actually now we can see the ground so I suppose you could say we could we're, no, we're not in sight with the runway, so if this was real world, we would still be saying 
No, we'd, we'd be saying go around, uh, but we're going to continue anyway. Now I can see the ground, I can see, and I can see the, the runway lights ahead of me, so this is where I pull out the autopilot and, uh, and begin flying manually. Um, I think I think I could have been a little bit higher on this approach. I'm not sure, but I was. I was. I think I was really close. I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not a lot of adjustment going from IFR to to hands on without the autopilot. And as you can see, I'm now just coming in here. Um, and there's an airplane in the background somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is uh, this is UK 2000 Jersey. I just recently got. And uh, I re-recorded this uh, footage just for you guys because I, I just recently installed this scenery, which is really nice, and I'm hoping to use it in future videos. But there we are. Um, yeah, that that it looks simple, but mentally, when you try and do this and pull this off, especially on Vatsim, it gets quite it gets quite crazy. Um, what do you think about that, Eric? Yeah, it's good. Yeah. I don't have the chart in front of me, but it looked very controlled and mm. and nice. Mm. Like, yeah, you yeah. had everything under control. Yeah, I think I think what I learned a few things while training for this specific approach. Yeah. I think uh, earlier on I made the mistake of trying to follow the localizer with the heading hold instead of actually setting it onto uh, nav mode, which which meant that. It was holding the heading, but the heading was off ever so slightly. So by the time I got to the threshold, I was actually like f like a hundred foot to the left, which is which is the clip that you saw in the bloopers, um, and it's actually just using. I mean, you're flying IFR here, folks. So you you're using, you can use your instruments, you can use your autopilot to help you, um, in terms of multitasking, to be able to take a few very uh, a few a few things out of the equation in terms of, you know, uh, heading, speed, or heading, or, or vertical descent, or, you know, those kinds of things. You can you can uh, flick on the autopilot so that you have less to mentally do, um, and therefore it makes it a little easier for you. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun uh, you know, training for this approach, and I, I'm, I'm really glad that, that I kind of forced myself to learn how to to do these kinds of approaches because uh, in the future as I go into IFR flight in small GA aircraft um, I'll be doing a lot more of these kinds of approaches I'll be doing I'll, I'm hoping to go into videos now where I, I do these kinds of maneuvers uh, as a common occurrence as well as like overhead joins and all sorts of things uh, that, that the IFR aircraft do but but you don't generally see in GA aircraft as much uh, but yeah, there we are, folks. And I have no idea who those uh, the crowd of people over there on the left-hand side by the door are. Parking um, next to the big boys, are we? Yeah, I'm, I I just thought I'd uh, I thought I'd just uh, waste a seven three seven gate with my Cherokee just because I can. Yeah. Yep, just because that's it's an good A2A enough. aircraft, you know, you can do that and get away with it. So yeah, thank you very much, folks, for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, leave some comments and. Uh, please give me some, some critiques uh, in terms of what kind of video this was.